now to speak about this a little bit more. Leland Vittert, host of On Balance here on News Nation. Good morning to you. You know, uh, looking ahead to President Biden's attendance at this NATO summit in Brussels next mm. week, obviously Zelensky uh, touring NATO nations via Zoom and giving these very compelling speeches is, is emotional. It's captivating. But what effect will it have on a meeting at NATO? Well, so far, we know what effect it's had on Estonia, who's come out in support of a no-fly zone. The UK, which uh, the Zelensky talked to Parliament a couple of, about a week ago, uh, offered to send much, much larger, more sophisticated air defense systems. Uh, so there, there's starting to be an effect uh, of NATO countries being willing to do more. The de facto leader of NATO is the United States. And so far, as we saw from Allison's piece, a very emotional plea and a lot of congressmen and senators went on a lot of tv programs and talked about how important it was to support ukraine but in terms of meaningful change to u.s policy uh which effectively is nato policy uh, not much has changed and there's not really a lot of reason to believe things will and what more could nato do i mean president biden has approved billions of dollars since the start of his presidency uh, for ukraine and of course nato's been remarkably unified overall at least that's been uh, what's been reported but what else do they have to offer if they're not going to give uh, an okay to the no-fly zone, if they're not going to put boots on the ground? It's a great question. NATO has been unified, which uh, is really, I'm not sure if that's um, an end in and of itself, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but everyone wants to celebrate unity. Uh, it's only been unified in that sense since the war began. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks before the war, Germany, which is one of the big key NATO members, wouldn't even give the Ukrainians lethal aid. They sent helmets uh, rather than weapons, and they wouldn't allow overflight of their airspace with weapons at all to rearm the to arm the Ukrainians. So uh, this is sort of a relatively new idea. What more could you do? You could do harpoon anti-tank missiles. You could allow the Polish MiG fighter jets that Zelensky wants to go through. You could send more more encrypted radios that they've been asking for. You could send uh, heavier weapons. You could send Amer American Patriot anti-aircraft weapons. Uh, the, the list that Zelensky would like of weapon systems uh, is long and it is significant. Uh, and the United States has said that there's a lot of things that they will not send uh, in the name of not provoking Vladimir Putin. That in and of itself is a policy decision that the United States has made. But the idea that simply because there's a dollar value assigned to the amount of aid that's been given to the Ukrainians, that we're doing everything we can is something the White House would like you to believe, but just isn't true. You mentioned the unity only since the war in Ukraine among NATO nations. And then similarly, uh, between Democrats and Republicans, uh, bipartisan support following Zelensky's speech that we need to stand with Ukraine, but no real red line. So is there, do you think, going to be a red line for the U.S.? Well, the White House has learned from the mistake in 2014 when then President Obama laid down a red line for Vladimir Putin and Bashar Assad of Syria about the use of chemical weapons. Assad used chemical weapons with Putin's either tacit or formal approval, and nothing happened. So it, that's why the U.S. That's why they are loath to lay down a red line because if you lay down a le red line and it's crossed, which Vladimir Putin is known to do, uh, you got to enforce it. Same thing about a no-fly zone. You put one in place, you got to enforce it, uh, and there is there is little desire uh, to put a policy in place that could bring U.S. and Russian forces head to head. One more question for you. I didn't want this to be buried. We mentioned it yesterday. President Zelensky saying negotiations with Russia have grown increasingly, quote, realistic. What does that mean? Well, you, you start to offer a lot more concessions when you realize, as President Zelensky is, is that he may survive as the leader of Ukraine, but there may not be a country for him to lead. The Ukraine is quickly turning into a pile of rubble uh, at the hands of Vladimir Putin and his troops. So the Ukrainians are offering a lot more uh, concessions. At the same time, it seems as though the Russians are softening in their positions because they're running out of ammunition and obviously become the world's pariah. The overarching question to any negotiation here is why would the world or Zelensky believe a word Putin says or believe that Putin will live up to any deal that he makes? And that is going to be a very tough question because the war we have going on right now is a very clear violation 
of a number of deals Vladimir Putin made, including his deal to end the 2014 war. So the idea they cease fire uh, somehow because it will be declared is going to be the end all be all of this uh, is pretty hard to believe. Leland Vitter, thank you as always for making time with your busy schedule. And of course, you guys can watch Leland on on balance every weeknight on News Nation, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.